All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to today's slug meeting. I'm going to be giving the first follow-up talk to support vector machines that Jamie introduced last week. And it's going to start off right where she left off. Um, she mentioned at the end that we have this great classifier for classifying things as support vector machines. And we could use it for other things, such as regression or even using it with other models. So I'm going to talk about how we could use support vector machines with ranking methods. In particular, how, to, how do we rank things? And support vector machines is a particular application of this. So the outline is the motivation for why we should consider ranked models uh, or ranking methods. And I'll give the, the general overview and the approach to ranking things. And then I'll show how we could break that down to a classification problem. And then I'll review SVM and then show an application of this SVM ranking for ranking college football teams using this year's data. All right, so the motivation, so I'll steal a little bit, steal a little bit of this from Neil. Uh, why should we care about ranking? Uh, basically because as humans, we like to put things in lists, uh, particularly ordered lists. It's an easy way of taking a lot of information and boiling it down to just a, a few things that everyone can understand. Uh, so uh, whether it comes to sports or if you're using search engines, uh, these are really useful tools for getting you the things you want. So you probably use these methods every day if you use Google or Bing. And then you can just see some of the examples of why people care about rankings. So first, the general approach to ranking methods and why statisticians should care about things like this. So you could think with uh, Google, there's a lot of money to be made. Or if you're a business and you want to try to promote content or products, you want to find the best way to rank them and promote the right ones to people. So the, the problem setup that, we're gonna, that I'm going to use, this notation, is that we have n items or objects that we're interested in ordering. And y is just going to be a vector of the ranking. So this is just a permutation of the integers 1 through n, where 1 is the highest ranking and n is the last. So I'll also use this notation, yi equals j, means the ith object is ranked in the jth position. And just standard with statistical notation, we have some features for each of these objects we're ranking, which will have x. And then in some situations, we may actually have observed ranking. So if we're collecting survey data, we may have uh, rankings that people fill out for the products that they'd be interested in. And we'd use those as features as well. So it depends on the problem. We might be aggregating rankings like that, trying to come up with a, an ideal ranking for everyone. Or we might just want to be interested in the features and how those features affect how people rank things. So similarly to what Neil talked about with classification, there seems to be two approaches. So a lot of probability models that we're used to in statistics and also a lot of algorithm models that come out of the machine learning community. So with probability models, a lot of times it's just you have a random variable, either observed or unobserved, and then you just use the order statistics to rank things. So you may have heard some of these, like the Bradley-Terry model. If you've taken computing with Dr. Joe, he uses this as a uh, homework assignment where you have to rank Major League Baseball teams. So that, that's the Bradley-Terry model. Uh, and then there's also uh, distance-based methods. So you could define metrics from some ideal ranking to the individual rankings and create a probability distribution for that. And so with all these models, we're usually doing uh, estimating parameters. So we could use MLE or Bayesian methods. And those parameters will tell us about the rankings. Uh, but a lot more recently are these algorithmic models. So these come out of computer science departments or machine learning. Uh, and it's also a lot of times under the title learning to rank or information retrieval. So those are usually used for search engines, uh, how to present documents based on a query. But you could apply it, put it in the same framework where your queries and your documents are, you now have features for each of those. So those come out of machine learning, but the probability models, a lot of these come out of econometrics or social sciences. They use these for uh, modeling discrete choices by people or how individuals might rank certain things. And while they're, they're dealing with the same problem of ranking, the, the goals might be different. So with algorithmic modeling, the goal is usually you want to predict the best ranking, and that's all you really care about. With probability models, you might be interested in the features and how those affect the rankings as well. And you can see with some of the examples of algorithmic models, you can see some terms that are familiar. So a lot of these use some other machine learning tools like SVM, boosting, uh, decision trees, neural networks. So a lot of the topics that are covered in uh, statistical learning have applications to ranking problems. So here's a, 
just a general setup of what a ranking might look like. So this is the actual ranking where you have one, two, three, four. And you might have some predicted rankings and you want to have a way of evaluating which one's better than the other. So just like we have loss functions for other methods, we have the same thing for rankings. So here's this first predicted ranking where the prediction is one, two, four, three. So here they reverse the last two as the mistake. And then in this last prediction, uh, there's also one mistake, but it's in the first two. One and two are, are missed, uh, messed up. So we want some way of evaluating how far off the rankings are from the actual values. So you could use mean squared error or some of the other methods, but these aren't quantitative variables. These have a different meaning. So there's uh, different loss functions or measures that we use. So one is uh, mean average precision. So this is usually used if, you have, if you're determining whether certain things are relevant or irrelevant in your rankings. Uh, Kendall's tau is one that appears a lot in statistics. It's a correlation measure, but instead of considering these as quantitative variables, it's considering the ranks of those and taking the ordering into account. So it's, a lot of times it's used for ordinal data. And then the last one is discounted cumulative gain, gain or DCG. And what that does is it puts more weight up at the top of the ranking. So with DCG, rank, uh, ranking one would be preferred to ranking two because it gets the first few right instead of the, uh, the last few. And that's usually what you want when you're ranking. It's more important to get the top of the list right than the bottom. If you're Google, it's more important to get those few search results in the right order than the bottom of the page where no one looks at. Or if you're ranking sports teams for playoffs or championships, you want the top of the list to be right, where if you mess up 24 and 25, it might not make a difference. So DCG takes that into account. Today's talk, I'm just going to use Kendall's Tau because it's an easy one to calculate and interpret. It's, it's like the correlation for these. Oh, and so how do we go from here to building a model for predicting rankings? So if these are rankings that we observe, one, two, three, and four, and we have features with each of these, we could build some, some model that uh, takes those features into account with these rankings. So you could take a naive approach. My pre-graduate school self would have just said, oh, these are numbers, I'll use regression, and use regression to predict rankings. But we know that these aren't quantitative variables. You can't use regression for something like this. Uh, and the approach that I'm going to use today is if, if we know these rankings, we know the individual ordering between any two. So if we look at one and two, we know who's ranked ahead of who. So we could look at the pairwise differences and turn it into a classification problem of trying to determine between any two observations who should be ranked higher. So I have uh, four, op four observations here. So four choose two is uh, six pairs. So I'd have six pairs here that I would compare. And with any of these pairs, I knew who would, who would win between the two. So I could turn this into a classification problem of who should be ranked higher. And I'll use that to train a classification model. And then when we observe some new data, we could use that model to predict who's going to be ranked higher on a new ranking. So that's how we're going to turn it into a classification problem.